Well, today's project, an older John Deere scraper. Customer bought this at auction and it stopped running. They think it's got a bad injection pump. I don't know much about it other than that. I do know the battery's dead, but I'll hop up in the cab and try to crank it and show you guys what it sounds like. And then we're gonna do some preliminary tests. Whenever you come across an auction uh, piece of equipment, a lot of times they've been sitting around for a very long time and this is an older scraper. Very first thing I like to check is the fuel. Make sure you got fuel in the tank. Diesel can sit around for a long time and be okay and still run, so we're not concerned about that. But I want to see if there's any water in the tank. I want to see if there's fuel in it. Um, so it's not as simple as just the tank ran out of fuel and then somebody didn't um, uh, refill it. But the very first thing I see is the throttle linkage is not connected. Um, on these older style setups, the only way to kill it is to... Um, shove your throttle all the way forward and that shuts off fuel and then when you pull it back you know to idle then it'll actually idle and um, start up so what i'm going to do is hook my jumper cables up to charge the batteries and then check the fuel give it a once over it's got a new ac compressor new ish um, check the oil level check the coolant to make sure all of our fluids are topped off always check the fluids first you never know what happens uh, the problem with being a mechanic is if you come out and it's like, hey, all they told me was it won't start. All you do is work on the injection pump and get it running. If you didn't check the oil and it ran out of oil, then the customer's going to blame you for it, even though it's not your fault or not. It doesn't matter. You're a mechanic. So let's try to crank it over. Well, the battery's dead, so I need to start up my service truck. And on these scrapers, a lot of them are 24 volts. A lot of uh, equipment is 24 volts. It's got two batteries, so you need to look at the batteries and see how they're... We have the positive side going to the starter up there. This negative cable is absolutely hard as a rock and no good, but it goes over to that side, which is the positive side. So you got... An Positive, negative, negative, positive. Then your negative to ground. Which means it's 24 volt. You can still use a 12 volt vehicle, 12 volt system to charge 24 volt. You just hook it up to one battery at a time. Don't try to go from your negative side of one battery to the positive side of the other or you'll fry your vehicle. Um, then you're in a lot more trouble. Just hook it up to one battery let it charge for a little bit and then charge the other battery. Now, when you hook up your government jumper cables to this battery, because they're wired in series, not parallel, it's not going to charge the other battery. It's only gonna charge one. So just one at a time, set your timer, let it sit for 10 minutes uh, running with your vehicle running so you don't, <laughs> don't kill your battery out in the field, which I've done before. And then hook it up to the other battery and then good to go. So I'm gonna do that and then check the fluids. So I really like the service truck, but there is one freaking annoying thing on it. It's got this really nice positive jumper lead right there, but absolutely nowhere to put your negative lead. I've tried using that little bolt. It gets way too hot, bad connection. So you gotta pull your battery box off and connect it right there. It's something I prefer to do every single time. Always hook up your positive first, then go over to whatever you're jumping. Remember, that's our positive. Put the positive up there. Then come back over here, pick up our negative. Then come back to the whatever you're jumping and then put your negative on. And just as a test, always kind of tap it a little bit. Make sure. The reason I tap it is because if you hook it up backwards, it'll spark tremendously. Um, if you just put your lead directly on to the wrong side, then uh, sometimes it can get stuck. It like welds itself to the terminal. It's not good. And then you're fighting that. So just kind of touch it a little bit. Um, I like to hook the positives up first and then the negatives. Because if you do the negatives and then one positive on one side, well then that positive lead is live. So if you take care of your positive first, and one of your negative clamps hits something, then it's not gonna do anything. It's gonna touch the frame and, and it doesn't matter at that point. If you hook your negatives up first, then you're positive, then you have a live positive. If it touches anything metal at all, then you got a problem. All right, we're 
good on oil. Oil looks brand new. There we go. Now she's happy. Does need a radiator cap though. All right, we've got diesel. I think it's got a lot of rust line in there, so it's got some water in it. I don't know if you can tell in the video, but there's some stuff in the bottom of that tank. It really doesn't smell very good. Diesel has a uh, kind of a waxy smell to it, and uh, that kind of has uh, an acrid, weird smell. Um, I don't know if that's the rust and water in it, just old fuel. But um, we'll get this batteries charged, and then once they're charged, we'll try to crank it up. I'm probably gonna um, temporarily put a, hook, put a bolt through this little clevis, see if I can't uh, crack it open. And then this is gonna be your fuel supply line. It comes in here, and these are gonna be your injector lines. Um, so I'm gonna crack these lines loose and then see if we got fuel coming out of here. Our fuel line comes over to this filter, which is a uh, old style glass John Deere filter comes over here to the fuel pump and then all the way up there now that lever should be our primer but it is not returning all right about 15 minutes on this battery gun um <laughs> emergency trip to the gas station because of uh apparently the burrito i had last night didn't agree with me and we're gonna swap the battery cables over the jumper cables rather over to the other battery get it charged up and then let it charge for about 15 minutes and then we'll try to crank it. All right, I got my fuel supply line off. Jumper cable still hooked up. I'm gonna do is take a wrench, jump that guy, and then watch that. Yeah, oh, that shocked me a little bit. So we've got fuel spitting out of our injection pump, but we don't have any fuel coming out of here yet. So this line looks like it's brand new or fairly new. I'm gonna take this line off just to make sure we got fuel coming out of it. Now this line connection is lower than the tank, so we should have fuel just pouring out of this. Looks like we do. So for a quarter inch line, we really should have more fuel coming out than just that little bitty bit. I mean, that's, that's just not very much. So I took that line off the pet cock Open it up. We got a pretty decent flow out of it. That's what it should look like coming out of that hose. And I don't know if you can see it, but there is some junk inside that line. So I'm gonna fire up my air compressor, blow air through this hose, try to get it unclogged, and then hook it back up, and then see if we got um, fuel coming out of our pump. Got the hose blown out. Turn our pet cock all the way back on. We got a decent amount of fuel coming out of it now. So now we'll crank it up again, or crank it over again, rather and see if we got any fuel coming out of our supply line. And still nothing, so it's gonna need a lift pump. I'm going to, um, actually I'm gonna try one thing. Got this little lever on this side. And I'm pretty sure every other fuel pump I've ever dealt with, that's a primer. So I'm just gonna leave it up like that. We're gonna crank it over again see if that changes anything I don't know if I'm about to go to John Deere and get one depends on if I can find a part number for that lip pump but I'm probably gonna take that lip pump off take it with me take these two batteries out take it to the shop put them on a charger so they're nice and charged up um, while I'm doing it and then go from there all right, our batteries are still dead, but that's a good amount of fuel. So I'm gonna put that line back on and crack these lines loose and let the batteries charge. Well, I pulled that line off again. We've got really good flow, volume, and pressure coming out of our lift pump, but we have nothing coming out of our injection pump. I tried holding the lever all the way over to you know see if that I like clear the rack or anything. 
my theory is that there's probably some trash or junk in here with a little diaphragm. There's a little bitty pump on the back of your injection pump, um, kind of like a supply to your uh, injector, whatever the hell you call them. But it's probably not good. Um, either that or it could be sheared off in the front and just not rotating at all. I've seen that before where it's sheared right up the gear. So I need to pull this little cover off right here. Um, look in there and get the engine rotated around to where this um, uh, You should have a lock pin uh, For this or a little tool that you set in there. I'm not sure how this one's set up I know some injection pumps like you pull a bolt out you stick it in there Then it's locked then you remove the injection pump. You're good to go So I'm gonna have to figure out the timing marks on this pull that little cover off and then there's a cover on the front up over here two bolts take the nut off the front and then that should loosen the uh, injection pump to where we can take the um, injection pump off so I pulled a little door off, but on this side right there, there's a little plate and it's got a little timing mark on it. I don't know if that plate's supposed to spin or not, but it is not spinning with the front of the pump. Um, so we're gonna remove the pump and I don't know if I'm gonna have to pin it or not. I'm gonna take that nut off that front drive gear. And if it's keyed, then it doesn't matter how you remove the pump because it'll only go one way. But if it doesn't have a key, most of them have just an interference fit then I'm gonna to have to figure out how to set the engine at top dead center and then pull the pump off. And when they give it the pump back, they'll set it at top dead center, so it's not that big of a deal. I wanna give you guys a little word of advice when it comes to taking stuff apart. Now this is the easiest nut to get to on this injection pump. That's the hardest one back there, maybe tied by this one, but those two back ones are much more difficult. Anytime you have something that has more difficult to get off nuts or bolts, always go for the most difficult ones first do not go for the easiest ones first because if you go for the easiest one first usually what happens especially on something with a flange like this you take off one side it puts a lot more pressure on that back bolt and then you're much more likely to strip that nut or bolt in the rear the, that's harder to get to and then you've got an all-day process of trying to get that bolt out also it makes it simpler because if you take all the easy ones off and you're left with the, the last hardest one, once you loosen that, generally whatever components it's holding will move and then you've got more tension on the bolt and it just makes it harder. So always go for the very the most difficult one first and then when you put it back together, put all the bolts in, you know, put the easiest bolt in loose by hand, don't tighten it up, and then get all the other nuts and bolts started and then come back and uh, do your crisscross pattern to tighten it down. But something I learned over the years and it's really helped me uh, become a better mechanic. All right, got the injection pump off. It is a Stanodyne DM42878. Just in case you fellas were interested in knowing that. Um, I'm gonna take this to the injection shop over here in Fort Worth, have them go through it, rebuild it, tell me what's wrong with it. And when it's done, I'll make another video. So, um, I took all the parts and pieces and everything, put them in a little Ziploc bag, put them in the back, and something else. I capped every single line. Now, if you don't have the fancy little blue caps, that's fine. Um, rubber gloves that you cut the fingers off of and then slip them over the, uh, the nut and everything works fine, but just try to do something to cover those lines and keep the moisture out of it. And in uh, Texas, we have uh, we constantly fight dirt daubers. Dirt daubers are mechanics' enemies. They know who mechanics are. They follow us around, and they will build nests in the dumbest freaking spots you can possibly imagine. You would think diesel fuel leaking out of the lines would prevent them from building a nest there, but no. I don't know how many vent tubes I have unclogged that had a dirt dauber nest in it. They tend to not give a crap with what kind of chemicals are around. Doesn't matter. If you want the little blue plastic cap kit, there will be a link down in the description. If you do purchase that, it's an Amazon link. Um, I get a little residual of that sale, and I really appreciate it. It helps out the channel, and it does not cost you a dime. If you click that Amazon link, you go over to Amazon, and you buy anything. So let's say you're going to buy a generator. Click that link down in the description. Go over there. Don't worry about what this link to. Top your generator in the search bar. Buy it, and the channel still gets 5 to 7% of that sale. It's a pass-through cost, so I get a little finder's fee in it. One of my favorite ways to make money off of YouTube is because uh, it doesn't cost you anything. I really, really appreciate it, guys. Hope you liked the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Throw your own comments down below if you've done one of these injection pumps or any kind of injection pump tips. And get out and fix it.